life has been evolving on Earth for 3,400 million years, growing, changing, and multiplying. Reproduction is the process by which new life is created. Occasionally, small changes in form and function occur during reproduction. These variations help life adapt to the changing environment. The evolution of life creates an ever-increasing multitude of shapes and forms. Life has found many ways of reproducing. Some life forms can divide. Ah, oh, that was cool. Why did you turn it off? Having trouble with your essay? Don't worry, it should be easy. We all grow after all. Yes, he's right. We all grow and multiply all the time. Who said that? Us. We're in Sammy's shoes. What? No way. I don't see anyone. Believe us. We are inside Sammy's shoes. We are bacteria. There are quite a lot of us in here. It's usually nice and warm and sweaty in here. And so we grew and grew and grew. <laughs> huh. It's like a whole different world down here. We like it. Bacteria are the most common life form. We exist on clothes, inside animals, in forests and cities, at the bottom of the ocean, and even deep beneath the ground. Our lives are pretty simple. We can sense when food is around, so we can eat it. As we eat, we get bigger and bigger. When we get big enough, we can divide in half. How do you divide in half? Well, have you heard of DNA? All animals have DNA, right? Yep. We are not animals, but we are cells. All living things are made of cells, and all cells have DNA. DNA is a set of instructions for all the things cells have to do, like eating or dividing. We can check our environment to change which set of instructions we're using. The DNA makes a copy of itself, then the cell divides in half. Now we have to Two bacteria instead of one. They each have the same DNA. Over time, the DNA can change so the bacteria can adapt. So, Bacteria come from other bacteria that split in two. Cool. I wonder if all animals come from cell splitting in half, but I think I heard somewhere that I came from an egg, and that egg came from another zebrafish. But if zebrafish make eggs, and zebrafish come from eggs, and zebrafish make eggs... Yeah. Who came first? For real. Well, I know where I come from. I am an Obelia.
This is an Obelia colony. Sort of like bacteria, cells of the Obelia can divide, making more cells. Unlike bacteria, our cells have two copies of our DNA. As they divide, each cell gets the same two copies. This is a good way to grow, clean and simple. The Obelia cells just divide and divide, sticking together, growing new buds very quickly. The only problem is the colony is stuck in one spot on the ocean floor. When food runs out in that one spot, the colony sprouts jellyfish, <laughs> like me. We can swim very far to find the best place for a new colony. We can be either male or female, making either sperm or eggs. Each egg and sperm carry only one copy of our DNA. Eggs and sperm from different colonies can come together in the water. When they join, they make a little Ophelia that has its very own two copies of DNA. One copy from each parent. It can now grow into a brand new Ophelia colony. Wait, wait, wait. I remember for sure that I came from an egg. Didn't your mom say something like that when she brought me home from her lab? Whoa, wait. I think I actually just saw an egg float by. Wow, the eggs are so big you can see them without a microscope. Remember when your mom brought us home for you? She said we grew up in only three days, but we grow a lot like other animals. I guess it makes sense why they have so many zebra fish in her lab. Using us, it's easy to study how animals grow. It looks like the DNA is acting the same in some cells, but not in others. Maybe it's working differently in different parts of the growing zebrafish. And different cells are becoming fins, muscles, and bones. So I came from an egg like an Obelia. I wonder if animals that live on land come from eggs too. What? What were you asking? Do animals have eggs on land? Yes! Chickens lay eggs. An eggshell builds up, and when the hard shell is done, the egg is laid. And DNA helps it go from an egg to a whole chicken? All cells listen to their DNA. They also listen to what their neighbors are saying to figure out what to do. First, a lot of cells move from the outside to the inside. The cells inside become the, oh, that thing that you swallow bugs with. The thing that is full when you eat a lot of bugs. And the, and the, um, anyway, cells on the outside become skin and nerves and uh, some other stuff. And the cells in the middle make everything in between, like muscle and bones. Sammy, it sounds like a zoo in there. Your baby sister can't sleep. You have a baby sister, Sammy? Where did she come from? Did your mom lay an egg like a chicken? Human 
Cells produce eggs and sperm, and they join inside the body. Every month, an egg is released from one of the ovaries. Each egg carries half the DNA a human needs. So does the sperm. Together, the egg and sperm form a single cell, giving it one set of DNA from each parent. This new cell divides over and over very quickly, making many more cells. This distinct clump is made of stem cells. This is what you grow from. Each of these can become any cell in the human body. Each and every cell of the embryo has the same DNA. Right now, all the cells are alike, but soon they will begin to grow into different kinds of cells. Look, those cells are moving around just like in chickens. Each cell is listening to their DNA and to nearby cells to figure out which part of the body to become. But the cells are also listening to their environment. The woman's body provides hormones, oxygen, and food to the embryo. It also helps to get rid of waste. Getting late, almost time for bed. Life has reproduction is the process by which new life is created. Some life forms can divide in half, multiplying very fast. Most animals create eggs and sperm, which join to create a new organism. Yes. All cells in the new body have the same DNA. DNA tells cells what to do to form all the different parts of the body. Sick! Cells listen to each other to decide where to go and what to become. All animals reproduce and develop in similar ways. The new body forms from a clump of stem cells that can become any type of cell. But growth doesn't stop at birth. since I first met you. Structures like your bones need to keep growing so you can become tall and strong. Your long bones, like the ones in your legs and arms, grow by getting longer near the ends. The dark bands, or plates, are the areas where the new bone is made. As the plates get thicker, they are turned into bone bit by bit. This thickening happens when stem cells in the growth plate divide to make more cells. They are making new cells by dividing like bacteria. Some of these stem cells go on dividing, while others stay behind and get larger and larger. Calcium and other minerals deposit around them. In time, the cells die. Blood vessels grow into the cavities, bringing many types of stem cells. The growth plate material is replaced with new bone cells. New bone cells come from adult stem cells. These adult stem cells grow at the very center of the bone, in the bone marrow. Here, adult stem cells divide over and over, forever, so there's always a good supply. Like the stem cells you had when you were an embryo, your adult stem cells become many different kinds of cells, like blood, muscle, and bone. The bones stop getting longer when the growth plates also turn to bone. 
but bone cells keep working. Even throughout your adult life, bone is continuously being broken down and rebuilt by stem cells, so you always have healthy, strong bone. Wow! Do other parts of the human body keep regrowing? Bone isn't the only tissue that can regenerate. Skin, muscles, and the liver can too. Scientists think that it's likely that almost all parts of the body are able to regenerate to some degree. Even the brain. The brain is made up of billions and billions of neurons. These cells connect to each other in an incredibly complex network, passing information along signals that encode our sensations, thoughts, emotions, and actions. Although much of brain development stops in your early 20s, growth in the brain continues throughout our whole lives. This area of the brain is involved with learning and remembering, Things like where you sit in your classroom, where you sat on the bus today, and how you learned the name of the new kid in class. These brain cells help us remember information about where we've just been and new facts we've learned. Like in the bone where cells are replaced to keep the bone strong, this part of the brain also needs to replace its cells to stay healthy and make new memories. A type of adult stem cell has been found in this area. These stem cells can make new neurons. For these new cells to be useful, they have to make connections to neurons already there. As we learn and remember, some of the new cells are activated. Brain cells that get activated over and over will develop completely and their connections will be kept. New brain cells that aren't activated die off. Growing new neurons appears to be necessary for our brain to learn and remember. In a way, our brain, too, continues to grow. Stress and aging make it harder for the body to make new neurons. So it's important that we get a good diet, plenty of rest, and exercise to keep a sharp mind. Are you ready for your essay? So, did you find out how we grow? similar ways and most animals come from eggs and sperm or when a cell divides into two but we don't just grow when we're little our stem cells help replace damaged and worn out parts of our bodies so learning where we come from helps us figure out how to use stem cells to replace injured parts of our bodies Wait, wait, but I still want to know who came first. <laughs>